<laughs> How are we? Fantastic. Good. Good. So good. Alfred's had a good amount of action. What's been the most physically difficult thing that you've done in playing this character? Well, I, I, getting old. I think it's the most physically difficult thing. The thing is, I, I, I don't bounce like I used to. I, I sort of splat now. But the thing is, uh, we have the most amazing stunt team. I'm a big shot out goes to Norm when I stunt for it. Because they've just been nominated for an Emmy, which is just phenomenal. Um, but they let me do as much as I possibly can. That's the great thing about our team. You know, a lot of the other shows taking you know, detracting from the brilliance of Game of Thrones and Daredevil and stuff like that. But they get a great deal of time to do it. We have very little time. We shoot our show, believe it or not, in eight days, which is extraordinary because you see the operatic nature of it. And sometimes we, you know, we don't get given very little time to do these fights, and they're so proud, yeah. proud of them because they, they're so real and visceral. Um, I love doing them. Uh, but uh, my body doesn't, I don't think. So, uh, the, the, one of the hardest ones was the one with um, Tabitha, because I was wearing about five layers of clothes. But being allowed to give Alfred physicality makes so much sense now, because you suddenly realise why, who taught that man to become that man? It's only that the physicality came from Alfred. So it's an honour to actually sort of, not give, to, is to redefine, not reimagine, just like to redefine slightly. You know, give, give him a history, give him like a history and an early age, which later, of course, he enables our young master Bruce to become the later people the man he later becomes. So, Bruce Wayne draws a lot of energy, I think, from Alfred throughout season two. Where does Alfred draw his energy from as a character? Uh, where does he draw his energy? Well, like, from his own personal just, just from a per Just from a personal perspective, Alfred's got a lot on his plate. He's yeah. mentoring Bruce. Yeah. Uh, where, where, does that, where do you think Alfred's character get, gets his energy from? And, and he does, he gets it from, he gets it from uh, young master Bruce. He says it in a uh, well, episode which is before he gets stabbed by his old friend Reggie from the SAS. He says, you know, I need the boy as much as the boy needs me. And he's very cosseted, he's a very dark soul, Alfred. He's got post-traumatic stress, he never sleeps. I don't know if you notice, but he seems to do everything in the entire manner. I mean, he does, he cleans, he cooks. Because he can't sleep, because he does sleep, he closes his eyes, he sees the people he kill. So that actually is a, really is, is um, to detract from that and to be concerned about someone else is the thing that keeps him alive. He gives a very cosseted nature, you know, the way he wears his clothes. Otherwise, I think he'd explode. He would have become that character, Reggie, who like, he has a very dark soul inside. And Thomas Wayne took him in when he was damaged from the wars um, and gave him a position of trust and, uh, and, and love, really. So, so that he needs the boy as much as he needs him. So, have you heard that Bruce is going to have a darker arc this season? How is that going to affect Alfred? In their relationship. Well, weirdly enough, I mean, the thing is, you can't tell a teenager not to do something because they probably go off and do it. You know, I've got something you know, called Alfred, really enough, but I know that myself. But the thing is, so you'll see a sort of a coming together, a combination of the two characters. They'll start to be drawn inexorably close together. More, to, more like the relationship that you actually know about Philip the Bruce. They'll start to see them come together and understand and communicate better than they did in the last first two seasons. So yeah, they actually start to come together and they, they've extended our, our manner. It's not just the study now, we've got a kitchen and a conservatory and the I love what I've done with the old place, by the way. And uh, where we start to spar and you start to see the training of just not just, you know, the, you know Alfred is like a, a Swiss Army knife. He's got many, many aspects. And I think that has to be reflected in the young master Bruce, to, the, the man he later becomes with Batman because he can do everything. From changing his voice to going back in the future to the dark arts, to driving a car, to horticulture, to cooking, to dancing, to everything. It all comes from this Batman. Have you seen Alfred I don't know. Listen, I know as much as you, you have to understand that. We know very little. It's not like a Christmas festival, we have a script. But I've been told there might be a lady on the front page. <laughs> <laughs> He had mentioned earlier that Bruce was going to develop his dual personality this season. Yeah. Is Alfred going to be, you know, aware of that, or is it going to be just like a Bruce being a teenager? Absolutely, absolutely, fully aware of it. 
in the SAS, there's, there's so many attributes that you have to have. You have to study so many different elements. Um, deception is one of them. The art of deception is one of them. It's camouflage. And all of that, if you think about it, is part of the persona of the man that makes dogs the cow. So yes, Alfred will be very much part of that. It's a, it's a fant I, I can't give too much away, but it's a fantastic double-double hook where it's... That's the album, so. <laughs> I've been taking outside the shot. So, but yes, the, 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 uh, they, they definitely start to develop the Richie Rich uh, persona as the smokescreen to cover up what they're really up to. And I'll say too much. How did you go about building your persona of Alpha? Um, I knew some people that were in the service in the SAS, and I'm, I'm very pleased that uh, Jeff Johnson, my showrunner, has allowed me to change it from being a Marine to being uh, a member of the Special Assets. I'd, I'd, I'd spent some time at the Herefordshire uh, on another show. That's the great thing about our job. We get opportunities of dipping your toe in in many different sort of aspects of, uh, of, of, of life, really. And I've trained with the military before and other things. So that, that had an awful lot to do with it. Um, uh, it was the military background was the thing that was very important to me. Giving him a reason why would he, why would the richest man in the world have a cock like a snide cock in East End working for him? To us it was obvious, and with the showrunners it was obvious. He was there not just as a confidant, but as a, as a protector. And, and so, you know, I'm hoping that we'll tap on the relationship that did exist between Thomas Wayne and Alfred. Because if you've read the Erkron books and things like that, you'll see that they fit together in the same and Alfred said his lives and certain occasions. So I'm, I'm hoping that there'll be some element of that this prehistory as well. Oh, right, right. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you.